You know, the, uh, the last thing Dr. King said to me before he was murdered was in my home when we were sitting planning strategy for the Poor People's Campaign, which was on the horizon of the politics of the day. Martin said, you know, I've been thinking long and hard about our struggle. We worked tenaciously for our rights. And uh, the culmination of all that effort will be reflected in what we've come to call the integration movement. And I sit here deeply concerned that I suspect we are leading our nation on an integration trip that has us integrating into a burning house. For Dr. King to have been in this place at a time when we seemed to be making great headway was a moment to pause and reflect. That reflection has taken longer than I had suspected it would, but it has certainly come to reveal itself fully when we look at the condition in which we find not only our world, but in particular, our nation. We have a lot of wreckages around this country. And perhaps the most distracting and perhaps the most important wreckage to take a look at is really the wreckage of the Democratic Party. Get him to the stage. I've been a Democrat all my life. I have no I have no treaty with the Republicans, nor do, I, nor do I really seek one. But the Democratic Party was not always our friend. As a matter of fact, a lot of what we had to struggle against was in the possession and the power of Democrats who came from the South. And when we showed them the tenaciousness and the conviction and the sense of great purpose that the people of this nation had into transforming our condition. All those Democrats from the South ran off and became Republicans <laughs> as, an, as an act of punishment for what we were trying to achieve as a people. And that punishment continues to play itself out. <laughs> what eludes us is the bankruptcy of the action itself. This country reveals its moral decay every day of its existence. Our prisons, the largest prison system in the world, are filled with those who are the victims of poverty. The women who are disenfranchised, young teenage mothers, are victims of poverty. Poverty is knocking at our door all day long. It sits in the mirror for us to look in every morning. When we look at what's going on with the schools in this country, we build more prisons than we build schools. We have more young black men and women in the prisons of America than we have in the universities. Poverty is in our face all, all day long. Why is everybody behaving all of a sudden like this is some great revelation? He is here? Yeah. Are they both here right now? Yeah. And I'll tell you something, there's a lot of people out here who are really pissed off. We are angry, we're, we're upset, we're, 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 we're sad, we hold our children, we wheel our wheelchairs, we look around for some comfort, and we don't find any. Well, we have to look to ourselves. Because I think the last frontier of truth and hope in this country are the people themselves. We look at these things in terms of sound bites and short-term efforts. It's going to take longer than that. And I think we have to serve notice that we're looking for a second party. Some people have suggested two exist. I say there's really one. It comes in various grades of difference. The American people have some decisions to make. Our foreign policy has made a wreck of this planet. And when I move to these places, I see American policy 
written on the walls of oppression everywhere. We don't need an independent committee to find out what happened and what is happening to this country. Our last independent committee told us, and Bush and the arrogance of these people to go off again and play the same scenario because they know that we ain't going to make a difference if where they want to go has to be changed. We have to give them a call to a new awakening. We know when they give a contract, a no-bid contract to Halliburton, we know what they did when they gave that contract to Halliburton in Iraq. We know what they do when they suspend minimum wage and go out and get immigrants to come in and fill to do the dirty work. And in suspending the minimum wage are setting black people and brown people and immigrants and men and women against one another when we should in fact be uniting. So I would hope that while the Black Caucus celebrates its moment, while we have all these wonderful black leaders and our white progressive associates, <laughs> that we would get off, we would get off the rhetoric, get off the redundancy, and dig deep into this country.